Hello students, welcome to the EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Trishanjit Kaur, Professor and Head, Department of Library and Information Science, Punjab University, Patiala, and Dean Faculty of Education and Information Science. Today, I am going to talk about the module Financial Management in University Libraries from the paper Academic Libraries. So students, the learning objective of this paper is to study about the sources of finances for university libraries, norms recommended by various commissions and committees, and items of expenditures and challenges faced. Finances constitute the backbone, the life and blood of any institution. Kotalya, the great Indian philosopher also remarked, all undertakings depend upon finance and hence, foremost attention should be paid to treasury. There should be sound fiscal policy, which is very crucial and important for any institution, let alone a university, the seat of higher learning. University finances have undergone a dramatic sea change, both in magnitude and pattern. The needs and demands of universities have increased and so has the flow of finances in them. But still, there are many, many loopholes. Sources of Finance University libraries in India receive funds in various proportions from the following sources. Grants allocated from the university budget, grants from the University Grants Commission, grants from central and state government, and Agricultural universities, they get grants from Indian Council of Agricultural Research and other get from different organizations. Endowments and gifts, library fee such as development fee, security, etc., fines and miscellaneous sources. The funds are usually either in lump sum to the university or item wise for staff, equipment, etc., and are generally given for one academic year. The university libraries, in addition to regular grants, also receive ad hoc grants from time to time from various sources such as UGC and such other institutions as Asia Foundation, Ford Foundation, Rockefeller Foundation, etc. Grants allocated out of university budget. An important part of university library budget is funds from university budget. Allocations are made normally directly to the library. There are two types of grants, recurring, non-recurring. The recurring grants are given generally for the purpose of purchase of books and periodicals, salaries of staff, maintenance of regular services, and for anticipated contingent expenditure. The non-recurring grants, they are for specific purposes, such as construction of library building, purchase of furniture, equipment, computers, other paraphernalia and at times for the development of special collection in university libraries. These are also known as ad hoc grants. Grants from the University Grants Commission. The university also gets special grants from the UGC which are passed on to the library for various purposes such as building, furniture, equipment, purchase of books, etc. State governments also provides matching grant, sometimes as per requirements of the UGC. It comes under university budget. Endowments and gifts. In India, endowments and gifts are a rare phenomena as Indians believe in doing charity in the name of religion and lastly for education. In the early 60s, the Indian universities were benefited by the endowment grants given by Ford Foundation, PL480 funds and the Rockefeller Foundation and many individuals who donated money for building libraries. Library fee such as development fee, security etc. This does not constitute library income in the real sense as the library fee is very nominal and security is refundable. Fines and miscellaneous sources overdue fines comprise a meager income of 
the university library as in many university libraries in India there is no fine for faculty and as such no uniformity for overdue charges is there. Sale of applications or information products, sale of waste paper, charges for photocopying, micrographic, computer laboratory usage and other such services fall under miscellaneous sources. Financial estimation. Foundation of proper financing depends upon correct and efficient estimation. There are three methods, per capita method, proportion method, and method of details. Per capita method. A minimum amount per head is fixed, which is considered essential for providing standard library services based on many factors. UGC Library Committee with Dr. S. R. Ranganathan as chairman recommended Rs. 15 per enrolled student and Rs. 200 per teacher for acquiring reading materials for the library. Later, these norms were revised to Rs. 25 for each student and Rs. 300 per teacher. Kothari Education Commission recommended about Rs. 25 for each student and Rs. 300 per teacher. Proportional method. In this method, the university authorities fix a percentage of total budget to be spent on the library. There have been deliberations and discussions about standards suggested for deciding this limit. Standards for allocation of funds from university to library. University Education Commission 1948-49 recommended 6.25% of total university budget be spent on the university library. The UGC Library Committee 1957-65 had recommended that for the time being library grant may be at the rate of rupees 15 per student and rupees 200 per teacher and research fellow. The Kothari Commission 64 to 66 recommended in its report that the library grant may at the rate of rupees 25 per student and rupees 300 per teacher. This is per capita method of determination of library finance. In percentile terms, the Education Commission recommended that a university should spend 6.5% to 10% of its total library budget on its library depending on the stage of development. The most ambitious recommendations were recommended by the Karnataka State University's Review Committee during 1979-80, to 80, whose chairman was Mr. K. N. Raj, who recommended 20% of university budget be spent on library. But despite these specific recommendations, the situation in university libraries has not been very bright. As a result of lacquer-scale approach to the university libraries, there has not only been a situation of financial stagnation, but also of decline in their funding. The recession-driven economy since 2008 has been responsible for providing fewer funds for state-funded universities and other institutions of higher education. Decrease in funding for libraries is a global phenomenon and India is no exception. On the contrary, as observed by Drake, universities are rather asking for increasing accountability, budget justifications and quantitative measures of values, outcomes and impact. Method of details. It implies all items of expenditure are accounted for while preparing financial estimates for a library. These include salaries, reading materials, books, periodicals, newspapers, etc. Binding, repairing, cooling, postage, stationery, rents, computer expenses and other things. The Ranganathan Committee uh, set up in 1957 the most comprehensive and significant document on the university and college libraries is the report of the UGC Library Committee chaired by Dr. S. R. Ranganathan. The report was published by the University Grants Commission in 1959 entitled University and College Libraries. It was perhaps the first attempt by any library committee in India to systematically survey the academic libraries on a national basis and it was also the first time that the government of India had decided to seek advice from professional librarians regarding academic libraries. The committee 
made recommendations to the UGC on the standards of libraries, library building, pay scales, and library training. Some of the recommendations of the committee included the provision that the UGC and the state government should help the college and the university libraries in the collection development of both books and periodicals. The formula suggested by the committee was that funds be given at the rate of rupees 15 per enrolled student and rupees 200 per teacher and research fellow. There should also be special initial library grants in the case of a new university and of a new department in an existing university. A similar scale should be followed for the college libraries. The wheat loan program during the 1950s and early 1960s, the Indian academic libraries received huge grants from the UGC amounting up to rupees 100,000 for books, buildings, equipment, and even for additional staff. At the same time, many libraries got additional grants from a special U.S. fund called the Wheat Loan Program. The American Congress passed a special act in 1951 known as the Public Law 480 to loan India a huge amount to buy much needed wheat, 2 million tons, from the U.S. Under the agreement of the loan, India had to buy American books, periodicals, and scientific equipment worth $50,000 to be used for research purposes in the Indian libraries. This main money India had to pay as interest on the loan. Part of the money was to be spent on the exchange of scholars, including librarians between the two countries. This clause proved a great boon as many librarians got an opportunity to visit, learn from the library practices of USA. The United States Authority bought some educational material and equipment from India for research purposes and higher education in the American universities. During 1951 to 1961, in a span of 10 years, Indian libraries spent US dollar 1400000 of the purchase of American books, US dollar 160,000 on libraries, US dollar 40,000 on the travel and study grants for 33 Indian librarians to visit the United States, and US dollar 75,000 on the travel and study grants of the five Americans. One of the earliest all India university survey was carried out by Srivastava and Verma, published in 1980. It was found that out of 32 university libraries, only 6 university libraries were spending 6.5% or above. 3 university libraries were spending 5% or above, but less than 6.5%. 10 were in between the range of 3 to 5%. 10 libraries fell within the range of 1% or more, but less than 3%, and the remaining 3 spent less than 1% of the total university budget. This is from Srivastava and Verma. Agricultural universities, they are funded by the state government and the Indian Council of Agricultural Research. During 90s, R.G. Prasher found that no university had spent 6% or even 5% of its budget on the library. Only one spent more than 4% but less than 5%. Four Universities spent over 3% but less than 4% and 2 spent more than 2% but less than 3%. 7 spent more than 1% but less than 2% and the remaining 6 spent even less than 1%. The wheat loan program during the 1950s and early 1960s, the Indian academic libraries received huge grants from the UGC amounting up to rupees 100,000 for books, buildings, equipment, and even for additional staff. At the same time, many libraries got additional grants from a special U.S. fund called the Wheat Loan Program. The American Congress passed a special act in 1951 known as the Public Law 480 to loan India a huge amount to buy much-needed wheat, 2 million tons 
from the US. Under the agreement of the loan, India had to buy American books, periodicals, and scientific equipment worth $50,000 to be used for research purposes in the Indian libraries. This main money India had to pay as interest on the loan. Part of the money was to be spent on the exchange of scholars, including librarians, between the two countries. This clause proved a great boon as many librarians got an opportunity to visit, learn from the library practices of USA. The United States Authority bought some educational material and equipment from India for research purposes and higher education in the American universities. During 1951 to 1961, in a span of 10 years, Indian libraries spent US dollar 1400000 of the purchase of American books, US dollar 160,000 on libraries, US dollar 40,000 on the travel and study grants for 33 Indian librarians to visit the United States, and US dollar 75,000 on the travel and study grants of the five Americans. One of the earliest All India University survey was carried out by Srivastava and Verma, published in 1980. It was found that out of 32 university libraries, only six university libraries were spending 6.5% or above. Three university libraries were spending 5% or above, but less than 6.5%. Ten were in between the range of 3 to 5%. Ten libraries fell within the range of 1% or more, but less than 3%, and the remaining three spent less than 1% of the total university budget. This is from Srivastava and Verma. Agricultural universities, they are funded by the state government and the Indian Council of Agriculture Research. During 90s, R. G. Prasher found that no university had spent 6% or even 5% of its budget on the library. Only one spent more than 4% but less than 5%. Four Universities spent over 3% but less than 4% and 2 spent more than 2% but less than 3%. 7 spent more than 1% but less than 2% and the remaining 6 spent even less than 1%. Kothari Commission, 1964 to 66. The Education Commission, under the chairmanship of Dr. S. D. S. Kothari, 64 to 66 was a landmark in the history of university libraries in India. The commission was shocked to note that the recommendations of the Radha Krishnan Commission had not been fully implemented, for only four universities in India had spent just 5% or more of their budget on books and periodicals acquisitions, though the 1940s 88s commission has suggested that 6% of the total budget be spent on libraries. It was clear proof that the university libraries in India were not functioning properly to fulfill the needs of higher education. Monetary guidelines were also suggested by the Commission. As a norm, a university spend each year about rupees 25 per student registered and rupees 300 per teacher of the total library budget depending on the stage of development of each university library. It was also suggested that the foreign exchange needed for university and college libraries should be allowed separately to the UGC. National Knowledge Commission. The National Knowledge Commission was set up by the Government of India on 13th June 2005 with a time frame of three years from 2nd October 2005 to 2nd October 2008. As a high level advisory body to the Prime Minister of India, the National Knowledge Commission was given a mandate to guide policy and direct reforms focusing on certain key areas such as education, science and technology, agriculture, industry, e-governance, etc. Easy access to knowledge, creation and preservation of knowledge systems, dissemination of knowledge and better knowledge services are core concerns of the 
Commission. Besides other recommendations regarding libraries, this is an important one concerning funding. Set up a central library fund. A specified percentage of the central and state education budget must be earmarked for libraries. In addition, a central library fund should be instituted for upgrading existing libraries over a period of three to five years. Initially, the value of funds from the government sector may be rupees 1000 crores, which may be matched by the private sector through corporate philanthropy. This fund should be administered by the National Mission Commission on Libraries. A special mention here, when Dr. Manmohan Singh was the Prime Minister of India, he granted rupees 50 lakh grant for all the university libraries who were established before 1947. College Libraries The college libraries in India have a significant role to play in higher education. When India attained independence, many of the 533 affiliated colleges did not have their own libraries, but at present every college in the country has a library and continues to be neglected. Majority of the college libraries do not have proper facilities to meet the needs of their users. Their collections are up to date, their budgets are very inadequate and limited, and a large number of them are single libraries. In many colleges, there is neither a library hall nor a sufficient big room, not to think of a separate building for the library. Any unused room, quite often somewhere out of sight, would be considered adequate to house a few shelves of books, and in most college libraries, there is complete darkness even during the daytime. As the windows are closed out of a fear that the books may be stolen, many do not have qualified librarian on their staff and have closed stacks only. Several commissions and committees, like the Radha Krishnan Commission of 1940, did not stress the importance of the college libraries in their reports. However, the UGC gives more importance to the college libraries as the quality of higher education and research, especially at the graduate level, depends upon, among other things, the standard of the college libraries and their services. Role of UGC Therefore, the UGC has played a significant role in the growth and development of college libraries since 1953 by giving grants for books, equipment, staff, and library buildings, and has done a remarkable job in salary improvement of the college librarians. The UGC's contribution to the college libraries is at the rate of rupees 15 per student with a maximum of rupees 10,000 with some additional and special grants for textbooks when a new subject is introduced in the curriculum. On the other hand, the colleges and the state governments have failed to provide their equal share. The total expenditure on the college libraries according to the recommendation of the Education Commission should be 6.25% of the total budget of the colleges, but in most cases it has remained between 1.5% and 2.3%. There is lack of collection development policy in the college libraries and book selection is done without taking into consideration the actual needs of the faculty and the students of the colleges. Even this small inadequate collection in depth and content is not used effectively due to the closed access system and lack of staff and facilities for instructions concerning their use. Information communication technologies have come in a big way in Indian colleges and university libraries. They have changed the information, the way information is sought and stored. It has directly put pressure on the already limited resources of libraries as first infrastructure is required to equip academic libraries with computers, internet connection and trained staff and other things. University libraries are buying access to e-journals and various databases, which again means more money is needed. The traditional formula of Dr. S. R. Ranganathan, where he had recommended that staff gets 50% of the total budget, books and other reading materials, 40% of the library budget should be spent, and 10% on miscellaneous items. Later, in view of the recommendations of various library experts, 
and committees, the allocation of expenditure amongst various heads may be done on the following lines. Salaries and wages, 50%, books, 20%, periodicals, 13%, binding, 7%, lighting, heating, cooling, etc., 3%, library supplies, 7%. Problems being faced. Changes in budget, revision of pay scales, staff salaries, they eat major chunk of library budget, escalating foreign currencies, devaluation of rupee, miscellaneous expenses, they have increased, and on top of that, users' expectations have increased. There is annual maintenance contract charges, which are known as AMC charges also. There have been studies in many of the university libraries where it was found that the salaries were eating almost more than 80% of the library budget. Auditing. Auditing is scrutiny of any financial transaction of government and semi-government bodies. It is a financial control exercise and provides control over irregular, inappropriate and wasteful spending. The central or state government, university grants commission or senate, whichever is the authority, ultimately it is the audit report which convinces and satisfies these authorities that every rupee has been lawfully spent. There are two types of audit systems in university libraries in India, post-audit and pre-audit. Auditing is done in the university office. The auditing responsibility for library expenditure lies with the university librarian. The usual practice, especially in the university libraries that have post-audit, is that the librarian is informed with the audit dates beforehand. A library staff member goes to the university office before the actual audit and notes down all the voucher numbers, payment dates, expenditure statements and other details so that the documents which are actually required for audit could be presented. Hence, auditing is done for the library expenditure. These days, pre-audit is a common feature in all the university libraries of India. In pre-audit procedure, the problem of collection and noting of vouchers does not arise. This simplifies matters somewhat and reduces the auditing responsibility of the university librarian. So students, let us now summarize what we have learned in this module ever since the origin of higher education and its institutes. Many changes have taken place politically, economically, socially, technologically and culturally which have directly or indirectly affected higher education and its institutions. Universities and their libraries are no exception. The journey began with Takshila, Nalanda and now again after a full circle there is new Nalanda University. Universities have grown in numbers and now crossed 650. In India there are big established universities and also universities that are run in a few rooms. The National Knowledge Commission had recommended setting up of 1500 universities by 2050, which seems impossible, and converting old colleges into universities is no solution. That is why private players have emerged and they are having state-of-the-art universities with latest infrastructure and equipments including university libraries, they are charging heavy fees and have commercialized higher education. Private universities are thriving and attracting students on the pretext of providing latest facilities. Funds have and will always remain the backbone of any institutions. So if the government and UGC do not sit together and chalk out a plan to deal with the financial crisis the future of university libraries and their services will be bleak. There is a need for universities to generate their own funds so that they can run efficiently and effectively. Similarly, university libraries have also to plan their strategy for future for proper financial management so that library services 
आर नॉट नेगेटिवली अफेक्टेड टू कीप पेस विद चेंजिंग टाइम लाइब्रेरी सर्विसेज हैव टू बी रीवैम्प्ड फ्रॉम टाइम टू टाइम एंड फॉर दिस पर्पस मोर फंड्स आर नीडेड एंड दीज विल हैव टू बी मैनेज्ड एज मेंशनड बिफोर दैट स्टेट गवर्नमेंट्स आर शॉर्ट ऑफ फंड्स for state universities and something needs to be done at the earliest to save the future generation of students from going without library facilities thank you